In this module, we're going to go over how to manage your EC2 instances. And we'll look at this from the perspective of EC2 best practices. So we'll talk about the best practices for managing your EC2 instances, and then we'll go into a lab and demonstrate some of these capabilities. So there are three areas that we need to cover when it comes to EC2 best practices. Security, storage, and backup and recovery. So for security, things we need to keep in mind when we manage our EC2 instances. We want to implement the least permissive rules possible in our security group. So if you notice in our previous labs, we were opening up port 22 and we were restricting it to our own IP address, but we were still opening up port 22 on our EC2 instances in our security group. Well, we can use a service within AWS to eliminate that permission. So we won't have to open up port 22 anymore to gain access to our EC2 instances. So now we're tightening down the security in our security group even further. And that service is called Systems Manager, and it has a session manager running within it that allows you to access your EC2 instances from the AWS console or the AWS command line interface without having port 22 open on your EC2 instance. And we'll demonstrate that in the lab. You also want to regularly patch, update, and secure the operating system and applications on your instance. So you need to manage the software on your instance. For storage, you want to use separate EBS volumes for the operating system versus your data. And you want to ensure that the volume with your data persists after instance termination. So remember we said in our previous module that when you have an EBS volume attached to your EC2 instance, that EBS volume can live completely separately from your EC2 instance. So if you terminate your EC2 instance, you'll still have your EBS volume. You want to use the instance store available for your instance to store temporary data only because data stored in your instance store is deleted when you stop, hibernate, or terminate your instance. So you don't want to have anything in your instance store that you expect to live through any of these instance state changes such as stopping, hibernating, or terminating. And then for backup and recovery, you want to regularly back up your EBS volumes using EBS snapshots and create an AMI from your instance to save its configuration as a template so that you can launch future instances just like this instance. And this is the idea of eliminating snowflakes from your environment, they're called. So when you have a template to launch EC2 instances exactly the same way they were the first time you launched them, you eliminate this concept of slightly different instances running all throughout your environment. And that's why they're called snowflakes, because every snowflake has a different structure. They're all unique. You don't want to have snowflake instances. You want to have regularly consistent, exactly identical instances when you launch them. This is the idea of immutable architecture or immutable infrastructure where I can recreate my instances without worry that they might be different from the last time I created them. So I can destroy them and recreate them anytime I want to because I know they'll always be the same. All right, let's go over to the console and launch an instance and let's take a look at implementing least privilege when it comes to accessing our instance through our security group. Okay, here we are in our EC2 dashboard. And very similar to what we've done in our previous modules, we're going to launch an instance, but this time we're not going to open up port 22, but we're still going to be able to gain access to our instance. So let's do that. So we'll launch an instance. And we'll choose the Amazon Linux 2 AMI, as we've always done, with an SSD volume type. We'll go with the T2 micro. Now here, in order to use Systems Manager Session Manager, which is conveniently referred to as SSM, so in order to use SSM, we need to add an IAM role to our instance to allow us to access it via SSM. And that IAM role is called 
Amazon SSM role for instances quick setup. So attach that role to your instance. The rest of this we can leave the same except for we want to add user data so that we can see how we can still access our instance via port 80 as a web server. So we have our user data script that we've used in the past. I've slightly modified this one to say that it's running an SSM agent and this script code will be in the course materials so you don't have to type it yourself. All right, so we have our SSM role and we have our user data. So let's now add storage. We'll use our typical root volume of 8 gig general purpose SSD GP2. We can add a name tag. All right. We can configure our security group. Now here, if you remember, in our past modules, we have assigned our own IP address and we've opened up port 22 for SSH, but we're not going to do that this time. You'll get this warning. You will not be able to connect to this instance as the AMI requires port 22 to be open in order to have access. Your current security group doesn't have port 22 open. Yes, but we're using SSM and that will allow us to access our instance. We do want to add a rule to open up port 80 because we're going to host a web server on this instance. So we've locked down. We've gone down to the lowest level of privilege we can have in our security group for our instance. It's a web server, so it has to have port 80 open up to the world, but it doesn't need any other ports open. So now we've established a very lean least privilege for this instance. Okay, so that looks good. We've only got port 80 open to IPv4 and IPv6. And we're ready to launch. So let's launch our instance. We'll select our key pair, even though we're not going to use it. Great. Let's now go back to our dashboard. And there is our instance. It is running, but it has not totally initialized yet. Let's give it a name. We'll call it EC2 SSM. Let's take a look at it. It is running, but its status checks are not yet available. So we will wait until we get system status check and instance status check as available or running. And so system status check is for the hardware itself. Instance status check is for the software running on the instance. And we can take a look at some more of the details about this instance. It has a public IPv4 address because we chose the default for the VPC in this case, and that is the default. It has a public DNS. We're going to use that to access our web server. It also has a private IPv4 address and a private IPv4 DNS. It's a T2 micro. It's in our default VPC. It has the IAM role that's going to allow us to connect to our instance using Systems Manager Session Manager, or SSM. And here's our AMI. There's our key pair. Okay, let's go back to the status checks and check that out. So while we're waiting for the instance to start, we can look at what actions we can take to it. So we can connect, we can view its details, we can look at its instance settings, so we could attach it to an auto scaling group if we wanted to. We'll talk about auto scaling groups later in the course. We can change its termination protection or its shutdown behavior. We can change its credit specification. Let's take a look at that. So configure burstable performance instances as unlimited to sustain high CPU performance for any period of time. So you can do this, but if the average CPU utilization over a 24 hour period exceeds the baseline, you'll incur charges for surplus credits. So there are questions on burstable instances on the exam. When I took the exam a couple weeks ago, I saw this question on the exam. So just know that you can use a burstable instance, an instance that can burst up in capacity when needed. Okay, so our status checks are now green. The system reachability check has passed 
and the instance reachability check has passed. All right, so now let's connect to our instance using SSM, even though we haven't opened up any port other than port 80. So we hit connect and we have different ways to connect. We can use instance connect. We can use session manager or SSH client, but we don't have port 22 of them, so that won't be allowed. So we'll use session manager. So you can connect to your instance without SSH keys or a bastion host. And sessions are secured using the AWS key management service key using this session manager service. So let's connect. And there we are, we are connected to our instance. And so now let's use the curl metadata command to get information about our instance. You'll see this on the exam as well. How do you get access to your metadata on your instance? I saw this on the exam when I took it a few weeks ago. So you have to curl HTTP 169.254.169.254 latest meta-data, not user data, but meta-data. And if you do that, there are several options that you can pass to it. So it's telling us we can use any of these options to get information or metadata about our instance. So if we want to know what network it's on, we can pass it the network parameter. And then we could further pass the interfaces command to get the list of interfaces it's supporting. We can get its local IPv4 address. There's its local IPv4 address, 172.31.36.85. We can get its local host name. And its local host name is IP-172-31-36-85.ec2. Internal. And so you can see how you can use these commands to get information about your instance metadata. And we can use the IAM command to get information about our roles associated with our instance. And there we are. So we use the IAM info command. And we see that our instance profile ARN is that. And our instance profile ID is that. And it was last updated at that time. All right, so that is how you use Systems Manager Session Manager, or SSM, to gain access to your instance in a least privileged mode. Okay, so let's go back and look at our instance one more time just to get a look at its storage and its network. So you can see our EC2 instance has its root device, which is an EBS volume. It's not optimized. Here's the volume ID of the root device. It's eight gig, it's attached. It's not encrypted. It will be deleted upon termination. Now we can replace our root volume or we could add, as we did in our previous module, additional EBS volumes. Now let's look at networking. The networking configuration for our instance. We have a public IPv4 address. We have a private IPv4 address. Our EC2 instance is running within the default VPC. We've got our public IPv4 DNS, our private IPv4 DNS, our subnet, and we're running in the US East 1E availability zone. We've got one network interface. There's its public IPv4 address, its private IPv4 address, the DNS name for private. We have no elastic IP addresses, but we could add one if we chose to. We could go into our instances, select it, go into actions, and under networking, we could attach a network interface, manage the IP addresses, and so on. We can also monitor and troubleshoot our instance. So we can manage detailed monitoring. And here, if we turn on detailed monitoring, will be charged additional charges. And with detailed monitoring, we can get more frequent monitoring for our basic 
monitoring categories for EC2, which are CPU, disk, network, and status check. Remember those for the exam. Those are the default monitoring statistics. Anything more than that, such as memory, will have to be added as a custom metric. So remember the four basic categories for monitoring metrics, CPU, disk, network, and status check. Because you'll get questions about what type of monitoring will you need to do to get information on the performance of the memory of your instance. And you'll have to add an additional metric to your CloudWatch monitoring to get that done. All right, so one last thing to take a look at before we close out this module. Let's go to our DNS name in a browser and see our web server running on our instance. So we'll copy our IPv4 DNS name. We'll go to a different browser, put our DNS name in the address bar, and there we have it. So we are accessing our EC2 instance via port 80 from a web browser. And we're getting the message hello from EC2 web instance with SSM agent installed. This is an Apache Nginx server. So if you remember the script that we put into the user data for the instance created that Nginx server and created that HTML, that index HTML page to generate this page when we visit our DNS address. We could also get to this via the public IPv4 address as well. So if we copy the public IPv4 address, go back to the browser and paste the IPv4 address, the public IPv4 address in the browser, we'll get the same thing. So either the DNS name or the IPv4 public address. Now, if we use the private address, if we attempt to access the server via the private address, it will fail. Notice it's still running, it's trying to access it. It will eventually time out and give us a service not responding message. There we can see we got this site can't be reached because our private IPv4 address is not reachable. Connection timed out. All right, so that is a basic rundown of the best practices for managing your EC2 instances. Remember to terminate your instance and clean up your environment so you don't incur additional charges. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success certified.